Neil here, we're back with a quick hot take review for Top Gun Maverick. So I did have a chance to finally watch it this past weekend, and this review will have some spoilers, but it will be more of an overall initial thoughts review. So if you still haven't seen it and don't want to be spoiled, then definitely watch the movie first and come back to this review. But if you don't care or if you've seen the film, then definitely listen on. So first things first, I did watch the film in a Dolby Atmos theater so I could get um, more of the high quality sound, listen to music in better quality, and have better picture quality and all of that. I hear that the IMAX version is also just as good, so um, granted you know, those are a little bit more expensive of tickets, so if you do watch it on a regular screen, it's not going to take away from the enjoyment of the film, but an IMAX and Dolby theater, or an IMAX or Dolby viewing are definitely better versions of the film to get a little bit more out of it. And especially in a Dolby Atmos screen, you do get more of the rumble of the jets in your um, feeling in your um, seat. The music sounds better. The converse, the audio is a little bit better. So, and you get more of that spatial audio. So overall, a better viewing experience. Um, I also did go into the movie having rewatched the first film. It was, as of this recording, streaming on um, Amazon Prime, so definitely check it out there. Just for a recap of the order of events, you get some of the character recaps. You can uh, review that relationship between Maverick and Iceman, which is a which is a good scene. Um, and in general, you just get that recap of the order of events. Um, it also solves that problem in the back of your mind why Kelly McGillis isn't in the film because she got that job. Um, or that promotion so she's not in this film and who Penny is and why she's important. Um, so that being said, overall the film continues the tradition of Maverick breaking the rules, bending the rules, not really following what other people says, but being a um, fighter pilot. So the whole movie doesn't spend time throwing down uh, or like throwing the events of the first film down your throat or nostalgia and all of that. But it does bring or it does tie in the events of the first film into um, this film very well. So you have um, Rooster, Goose's son, being a spitting image of his father, being a fighter pilot, um, get having that same um, feelings and emotions that Maverick had in the first film. So... While Maverick is trying to be the stepdad that Goose, or trying to be the dad that Goose would have been, but then also ha um, Rooster having lost his mom and all of that, and then um, facing the repercussions of pulling Rooster's application to send him back to not being a fighter pilot and all of that, all of that is portrayed very well. It's balanced. Um, you have you see that um, tension between Maverick and Rooster, but. Rooster also listening to Maverick because he is that dad that he never had. So think of it like the relationship between um, Obi-Wan and Anakin, where Anakin's trying to follow what Qui-Gon's Qui -Gon's example, um, Obi-Wan's example, but then still having that tension that um, Anakin wanted to be trained by Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan is the adoptive teacher. So um, very good balance there as far as all of those character interactions. Um the opening scene of the movie is also very important for the ending of the film because you have Maverick testing this new drone jet to go up to Mach 10. He pushes this to 10.3 and that plays very well into the end of the film when he's teaching the, the um, new generation of pilots of what can be done, how to push themselves to the limit and that they don't know everything um there is to know about being a Top Gun fighter pilot. So all of the, the entire film is a progression of those events. So um, the opening sequence is to show Maverick's limits and how he's going to pull off the um, the mission at the end of the film. And then how and then a basic progression after that to show that the new generation doesn't know everything and that um, Maverick has to lead by example and not and not um, teach uh, with um, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. So all of those various examples were very well portrayed in the film. Um, 
The thing that I did like was that they found an actor in Rooster who was a spitting image of Goose, so I liked all of that. You have um, him knowing this um, Great Balls of Fire song. So essentially you have um, Maverick dealing with the past, seeing Goose in his son, and um, having to come to terms with that versus um, letting Goose come into his own and learn how to be a fire pilot and not have to protect him in anything, but also teach him how to be responsible, which is um, very well portrayed in the scene between Maverick and Iceman. So if you don't know about Val Kilmer's history, he did um, get, I believe, I want to say, th- actually, I didn't even look this up, but I think he got some sort of throat cancer in real life. So they portrayed that well in the movie. And so he has to type more than he um, speaks. But the speaking role, I guess, was a mix of AI and a few other things to give him a voice in the film. So a very good and touching moment. Um, and then his death in the film was a very emotional scene. And Tom Cruise played that very well um, to show the loss of a friend. Um, and then, of course, that scene with um, Iceman and Maverick was very well done as far as who the better pilot was and Cruise saying, let's not ruin the moment. So... All in all, a very good film. So if you're on the fence about this sequel coming out, like, what was it, like 40 years later or 30 years later, whatever it is from the original film, um, you're not going to be disappointed um, just because of all those things I said. It's not... They're not shoving down the shoving the nostalgia down in your throat, but they are showing that this is a sequel to the original film. And it's one of those things that... This film does a better job of what Independence Day 2 was trying to do with the first one. Um, so I think that's where Independence Day 2 suffered was not having um, Will Smith in the film to be that mentor to... Um, and I th- want to say I want to say Michael B. Jordan, but then I also want to say John Boyega, and I actually don't remember offhand. But I think that's that kind of role that would have benefited well in that film, which Top Gun Maverick did well he or much better here is to have that relationship deal with that and deal with the um, events of the first film dead on um and essentially confront it deal with it and create a story around it to move on and um help all the um characters come to terms with how what happened in the past <laughs> so in general I recommend giving it the film a watch. Um, overall, if I was to grade it, um, on first thought, I want to give it a grade of an A. Um, it was definitely worth watching. Um, I enjoyed it. The jokes were good. Um, the interactions were good with all the characters. Um, none of the new characters were given any more or less priority over the others. So you would think that the whole film is going to be about uh, Maverick and Rooster, but they do spend enough time with all the other characters. So that is very well balanced. And of course, if you're wondering, they do create a new version of the volleyball scene from the first film in the second film in the form of uh, football on the beach to as a team building exercise. So the attention to detail is very well done in this film and definitely worth um, checking out. So whether you watch it in the theater at home, um, I definitely recommend watching it. It'll benefit from watching on the big screen but once it's available for rental then definitely worth watching on a uh, big screen tv in surround sound so you get that good um, sound quality but also the good visuals so like i said overall first thought um i give the film a grade of an a definitely two thumbs up for me so that's all there is for this review so thanks for tuning in and listening The next scheduled review is going to be for Stranger Things Season 4, I guess Part 1. I'm finishing up the final episode, so as soon as that's done and I have some thoughts together, I'll have that initial review out as well. So thanks for tuning into this video, and until next time.